strong as a spell I'll never tell Yeah, I like you, that's for sure Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. This past week, a Mormon I knew over a decade ago decided to go online and tell my story. This person was in my ward when I was a kid, but I haven't seen them in well over 10 or 11 years, and we never knew each other well enough to even be called friends. Apparently though, this person thought they knew me well enough to educate others about my true nature and the real story behind why I left the church. Obviously the whole thing was laughable, like if you took every Mormon stereotype about why people leave the church and crammed it into a few small paragraphs, that was basically his story about why I left the church. Couldn't keep the standards, couldn't keep the covenants, didn't listen to the prophet, too lazy, lacks priesthood leadership. My husband and I actually laughed about it because my entire story, the reason why I left the church is available online publicly. I'll leave links in the description if you want to, you know, hear the whole story. But Mormons are so determined to ignore what I have to say that they would rather make up their own story. So anyway, after I read that, I started thinking about what Mormons believe about apostates, people who leave the church. And I've talked about this sort of thing in the past. You may remember last year I did a video where I talked about a family member of mine who said that people who are led astray are trying to destroy the gospel. We get those sorts of comments a lot as ex-Mormons. Then I started thinking about how much of my content, and other ex-Mormon content in general, ends up being really simple stuff like, ex-Mormons are just regular people too. Which seems really silly, but it actually is necessary. Because the church has taught over and over for decades that people who leave the church are servants of sin, followers of Satan, deceived, dark, bitter, wicked, lazy, corrupted, prideful, etc, etc, etc. It's nearly impossible to leave the church without being labeled like that, which is obviously really harmful. It can damage our relationships with our believing friends and family, it can hurt our own self-esteem, and it can alienate us from our entire community. As I was having a discussion about this on Twitter, a Mormon jumped into the conversation and argued with me that the church doesn't teach these things anymore. Well, first of all, it absolutely does. While I agree that in general, the church is headed in a less extreme direction, like they no longer teach that we should stab apostates with Bowie knives, they also still have so much content on their official website decrying apostates as every negative descriptor you could possibly think of. I also believe that a lot of it is performative because the basis for the way the church talks about apostates is scriptural, which is why it's unlikely to ever change. In Doctrine and Covenants 121, 11 through 17, it is suggested that people who disagree with the prophet or the apostles cry transgression because they are servants of sin and are the children of disobedience. And then in the very next chapter, it goes on to say that we are fools and traitors. In Alma 923, it says that apostates are worse off than Lamanites. And then from the prophets and apostles themselves, there is so much, so many quotes that you could fill an entire book just with quotes about apostates. 99% of it is super negative towards anyone who leaves the church. Here are just a few highlights. From the Mormon prophet Harold B. Lee, Mark well those who speak evil of the Lord's anointed, for they speak from impure hearts. Only the pure in heart see the God or the divine in man and accept our leaders and accept them as prophets of the living God. I want to bear you my testimony that the experience I have had has taught me that those who criticize the leaders of the church are showing signs of a spiritual sickness, which unless curved will bring about eventually spiritual death. I want to bear my testimony as well that those who in public seek by their criticism to belittle our leaders or bring them into disrepute will bring upon themselves more hurt than upon those whom they seek to malign. I have watched over the years and I have read the history of many of those who fell away from this church and I want to bear my testimony that no apostate who ever left this church ever prospered as an influence in his community thereafter. Pretty bad. Spiritual sickness, spiritual death, bringing hurt upon themselves, and no apostate who ever left the church prospered as an influence in his community thereafter. From Elder Larry R. Lawrence of the Quorum of the Seventy, in the early days of our dispensation, many priesthood brethren, to their regret, did not stay loyal to the prophet. One of them was Lyman E. Johnson, who was excommunicated for unrighteous conduct. He later lamented having left the church. I would suffer my right hand to be cut off if I could believe it again. Then I was full of joy and gladness. My dreams were pleasant. When I awoke in the morning, my spirit was cheerful. I was happy by day and by night, full of peace and joy and thanksgiving. But now it is darkness, pain, sorrow, misery in the extreme. I have never since seen a happy moment. Think about those words. They stand as a warning to all church members. Darkness, pain, sorrow, misery in the extreme. Never a happy moment if you leave the church. He said that in 2017. So 
This is certainly not old news. Elder Carlos A.C. of the Quorum of the Seventy, avoid those who would tear down your faith. Faith killers are to be shunned. The seeds which they plant in the minds and hearts of men grow like cancer and eat away the spirit. We should be shunned. We are like cancer. You know, I've been making content about the church for quite a while now, and I've read an awful lot of the bad things that church leaders have had to say about apostates. The prophets Joseph Fielding Smith and Brigham Young in particular had a lot of really negative things to say. And usually none of it really bothers me, I've been doing this too long. But this stuff actually did make me feel bad. And not because I believe any of it's true, because I obviously don't. What makes me feel bad is knowing that so many of my friends and family members do believe this. When they go to Sunday school or institute, when they have a lesson in gospel doctrine, when they listen to general conference, these are the sort of messages they're hearing about me and people like me. And as the wonderful, faithful Mormons that they are, they believe what their prophet says. They see me and anyone else who leaves the church as miserable, bitter, foolish, lazy, spiritually dead, cancerous, and worth shunning. Is it any wonder that people who leave the church feel alienated? How could your entire community talk about you this way without you feeling hurt? And as far as this old ward member of mine who made up his own story about why I left the church, as disappointing as it is, of course he would. His church leaders have hand-fed him a set of reasons why people leave the church, as well as a lengthy list of why we are terrible, untrustworthy people, and he ate that shit up and regurgitated it. So yeah, he might have been purposefully lying, but I honestly think it's more likely that he truly believes his own version of events. It would make more sense to him than the truth, because in his eyes, there is no good reason to leave the church. It just had to be because I wasn't good enough, I wasn't worthy. So if you've ever wondered why sometimes you'll hear me saying things like, I'm just a regular wife and mother of four. I'm just a girl who likes plants and reading books and riding horses and going to concerts. I'm often saying things like that because I'm trying to combat how the church is dehumanizing me. I really am just a regular person, having a regular life, paying a mortgage, having hobbies. I am not this servant of sin and lazy learner that the church tries to define me as. Ex-Mormons are just regular, usually awesome people. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. Has anybody ever made up a story about why you left the church? And how did it make you feel? Anyways, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. An extra special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are the absolute best. Extra special thank you to Craig Call, Doug Davis, Noble Monster Comics, Tans, and the Exmo Candle Co. for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. If you guys would like to support the channel and the work that I do, there are links to do so in the description below, as well as links to all my other social media if you want to see more content. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Just trust that I'll keep it locked in a cell Never revealing no secrets